White Wolf versus the Falcon. You know, they're both. Welcome back to the Philly Esports Collegiate Aces Series. I'm Tanrek. With me is Cap still on his phone. Poor guy. Give some sevens for him in chat. He's really going through it right now. We're hitting up the crew battle number three, Western Colorado University taking on Campbellsville University. Now, up until just last crew battle, uh, they were adjacent in the standings, but instead now Campbellsville is sitting alone at third place, four and three. Meanwhile, Western Colorado currently three and three at the moment. So they're still over in fifth place, but these th this crew battle could potentially change a lot. And honestly, both of these teams, they are still very tight knit uh, when it comes to composition. Uh, that's absolutely true. A lot of a lot of diversity in this cast. Campbellsville, uh, looking at a lot more. I'm sorry. Do, do I have that right? I, I, I brain short circuit for a second. Buddy. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Kate, Campbellsville. Uh, a lot of a lot of play uh, characters that like to play from a range, except for Poke. Obviously, that does get in there um, on the Aegis or Palutena. Um, but a lot of we have Pac-Man, DDD, Rob, K. Rule. You're looking at characters that aren't can scrap, but aren't necessarily going to want to versus on the other side you're looking at um excuse me you're looking at uh wcu you're looking at a wario uh pokemon trainer falco plant samus uh young link min min joker a lot, lot of a lot of variety there a lot more uh, across the board in terms of like zoners and scrappers than campbellsville i think rick john taking on say uh, say again eon pancake flip so this is someone new from campbellsville Actually, someone say, from this last is year, apparently. Not, okay. not new. I know Pancake Flip. Um, <laughs> this is fun. Oh, well then tell me about Can Pancake Flip, Cat. Uh, I don't know anything about him. Good player. <laughs> good player? Really? Uh, I don't think we saw him too much last year. Uh, was was kind of a sub, but uh, I believe he still played Young Link at the time. Um, I mean, you're, it's... I, I didn't see anything last year that is outside of the norm for Young Link. You're, you're kind of looking for these projectiles into your aerials looking for these combos off of them really combos off of anything honestly um but when you're playing in cruise safety is the name of the game chucking bombs from across the stage is way safer than running up and down building the the thing for me for campbellsville is that it hasn't really been until recently that oh that's death oh that's well, it yeah gotta take those gotta take those rick john come on buddy but the thing about campbellsville is it hasn't really been until recently that their roster who has all performed individually incredibly well estix has popped off academics has popped off bump has popped off poke has popped off Fellwinter's popped off but never really to a point until recently where they've consistently won these crew battles they have a winning record right now but it's really tight and honestly i don't think it should be this tight i think by the end of the season we're going to see them being a top contender i think they really are that good right now Flip and Rick John still t trading blows right now, and Rick John found a lot of damage from below to start out this second stock, and it's still doing it. 108% out of nowhere. Rick John has really found a lead here. I really feel like this game has turned around on its head, and I feel like I looked away for two seconds to yeah. look at a oh! And, oh! and now we're here. I, I got gimped off stage at like 50, and now now we've got a you know, basically a full stock lead. Uh, only it's not really going to be killing till uh, upwards of 100% unless he gets some setup, so... Got a lot of space to work with here, and when you're Falco against someone at 0%, you're, you're going to see this. You're going to see 60% really before you see any really response. 76 damage is still going up. This, we very well could see the end of this game within the next couple seconds, honestly. Rick John is, got 89 already. Rick John is ripping each one of those interactions just wide open. Nair drag downing when, pan when, can when Pancake Flip tries to drop in and then you know on the dash tack able to get a solid up tilt into some sort of back air towards the center stage so that rick john keeps advantage just a lot of control with this falcon going into this third stock especially 110 pancake kick going for some mix-ups on this recovery he gets an up smash out of it but that's not a killing move just yet against this falco 105 percent still has to find one more to keep this game at least a little bit close starting things out for campbellsville right now drop down there rick john really outperforming right now We've seen him probably one of the most, uh, probably one of the more inconsistent players so far for Western Colorado. Sometimes he's able to take four or five stocks, sometimes takes none at all. But right now he's looking to take the former at the moment. Trading blow still lost that second stock. However, this is looking to be just about done. Another up tilt, up air gets air dodged out of it. And now Pancake Flip has the up air on the way back down. Now he's below right now. Gonna launch a couple more projectiles and just try and play this game a keep away to make sure that he still has a chance of equalizing his damage as quickly as possible. 
if I'm Pancake Clip, I'm actually feeling pretty okay about this, honestly. I mean, obviously you're at 134, a lot of stray hits from Falco can't kill, but he doesn't have those safe confirms anymore. He's oh. with the bomb. Really smart idea, but unfortunately up being the wrong way, maybe trying to scoop him off the ledge, but Rick John not gonna fall for it, just gonna F smash right for the stock. He may have just failed a B reverse real quick, honestly. It's online, sometimes you just whip that kind of thing, and unfortunately, could not snap to ledge because of it. It's going to be Rick John taking the first game, but only with one stock left, which means now Campbellsville, they have to bring in that counter pick and then immediately get expected to be counter picked as well. So I'm trying to think of what characters are the least counter picked and, and what comes to mind immediately is Poke on that Aegis or, or Palutena. Bring in that safe option, get rid of this Falco stock, and then be ready to get counter picked by something that can't really counter pick you. Yeah, I I agree. I think Poke is out, out of. All of the characters we've seen so far from Campbellsville, I think Poke is definitely uh, on probably the safest, like least risky pick. Exactly. Um, Aegis and Palo not going to lose anything really hard, oh. especially against that roster. Yeah, that that one is really heartbreaking to see. Um, really not going to lose anything into that. I, I don't think there's a single character on that roster that Aegis and Palo don't at least you know go even with. I think I think they cover the entire roster that we've seen so far from uh, Western Colorado. At the very least, it'll bring out a big dog from WCU early if uh, if Poke does his job properly. It'll bring out a Deekster or it'll bring out a Bolts, I think. I think it, it'll definitely prompt an early pick. But instead, it's going to be Academics on that Pac-Man. And we've seen Academics. People have a hard time counterpicking that Pac-Man because Academics can stay so predictable and has so much presence with that Hydrant and also the Fruit. Just, just really controlling any fight that he engages in. And doesn't necessarily win those fights, but a lot of the time, just just a lot of stage presence, and academics can win on that a lot of the time. Pac-Man's also a character that can just eke out a stock in a crew battle if you're just kind of stuck on one. Mm -hmm. I, if, if if it weren't for Poke, I I would probably choose academics as well. Yeah. Um, Pac-Man's so good going like second or third in crew battles. He can just eke out stocks from people beforehand and really just rack up damage and take like risk free stocks for honestly forever. Um, obviously, not going to happen. Someone's probably going to get in unless we see academics clean sweep this somehow. <laughs> um, probably, I'm looking at, I'm imagining this stock's going to go. I, I I don't know how I feel about whether or not Rick John's going to get a stock off of, into this. Um, I obviously want to see Rick John take as much as possible for his team, but. Falco, Pac-Man, despite having the Reflector, is kind of rough. Falco's very slow is the problem. Yeah. He, he jumps unless high, he's but air. he's so slow. Yeah, unless um, he's in the air, Rick John is going to have a tough time. And, and or we're going to go right into it, right into Kalos. I know this is a uh, just from playing against him. I know Academics really likes Kalos. Uh, really good pick for Pac-Man, too, obviously. Um, your ledges are going to be much easier to cover when you have your platform that's like right above it. Um, two stocks taken oh, down. Wow. That's going to go right into it. That was so wonky, and yet it didn't really do all that much damage. Only at 27% right now. And there's Academics attempting to take that control with the Hydra and already whiffing a grab here. And so things are a little bit even. And Rick John, I love the spacing that he's willingly taking. Just, just playing even more keep away, really, than Academics is right now. Making sure that Academics can't really throw that much at him without potentially getting consequence has thrown back at it he's perfectly fine with waiting at the ledge he's perfectly fine just letting academics sort of play from afar right now because falco can to an extent do that too yeah oh. i would definitely oh a key coming sick. out i would definitely like to see academics uh try to be a little less scrappy i'm, I'm seeing a lot of these run in fairs and theirs now i would like to see him play around this as he's doing now playing around this fruit playing around the hydrant um, down around shield is also pretty good into Falco just because it's, you know, it's four hits of it and then you can just kind of roll out of it. I, I'm not sure how safe it is, but it feels safe when you're playing against. It feels like you can't do anything about it. Um, <laughs> I'll smash out of shield, gonna be missed space. Uh, reflector the wrong way as well, but honestly, just, just trying to cover any projectiles that Pac Man might be throwing out. I like the idea. I think. Oh! oh that's something you don't see often. There's getting the hydrogen the, hit. Yeah. Getting reflected right back up. Um, it feels like Rick John's playing around a, a campy Pac-Man, and that's not really what... No, no, no. Come on. Oh, okay. The trampoline, you can't be <laughs> Oh, wow, that smash going to take it. <laughs> I'm okay, chat. I'm fine. But it, that was close. That was tough. It felt like Rick John was playing around a Pac-Man that he wasn't fighting. I saw a lot of reflectors in there when... 
realistically, academics is running up and throwing an aerial at you, and you're just gonna get hit every time. I I love how Rick John was playing though. Truly, I I love it. I I love how he was expecting a lot of academics play style as the game went on. Just just something as simple as launching a reflector out because you're ready for the hydrant displacement and getting a hit off of it. It just shows me how prepared Rick John became as that match went on and on. But Academics did not lose a stock. However, he is about to get counterpicked by somebody over at Western Colorado, or over at, uh, yeah, over at Western Colorado. Question is, who is it going to be? I say bring out Mild Knights on the Youngling. I I, I say show off your, I, I say show off your, your, your Youngling now. I'm looking at this roster. I'm not sure who I'm feeling, honestly. The Min Min, it's a, I feel like it's a little early. Another it's a little like the Min Min. Yeah, we're, we're, right we're getting now. another what? new face. They saw me come in and they were like, you gotta throw as many new faces <laughs> at the new caster as possible. You this can't, is just a can't new just... Aces series now. <laughs> yeah, I, I made all these spreadsheets for nothing, I guess. We I actually know. have nine more teams coming in tonight as well, chat. We're going until 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah, we will be up all night. You have to stay. You don't have a choice. <laughs> you die in the stream, chat. You die in real life. <laughs> if you close Twitch chat, <laughs> your computer explodes. <laughs> this entire Twitch stream is just a Trojan horse. <laughs> yeah, you should. The Legion teams just happen to be playing at the same time. You're going to wake up tomorrow morning and there's going to be like seven different recruitment letters in your mailbox. And you're going to be like, how did I, how did I get <laughs> these? Congratulations. Like you, opened, you opened that Twitch stream last night. There you go. That's that's it. Honestly, this Asa series is a better commercial for any of these schools than they've probably ever put out in their entire lives. And Honestly, I say that watching yeah. a lot of these schools commercials before the streams start. So, Especially for esports. I mean, this is a free esports commercial. Exactly, like, exactly. On. College is saying, yeah, we do esports. And some of these schools we've already talked about is, is they have scholarships for it as well. A lot of these schools paying a lot of these students to come over and play for them. Come represent them in these tournaments and for good reason. There's some really great players out there and there are some really great tournaments for colleges to participate in. It's a great space and it's so great to see so many of these schools just welcoming it with open R's. So we'll see Zane going against this Pac-Man. And I'm excited to see what this new face is going to bring to the table for Western Colorado University. It's going to be an incineroar. Oh, ooh. <laughs> I don't know about this. You don't know about this one? Uh, here's the thing. Right? Talk to me. Here's the thing. Incineroar, kind of good, but you got to get in. Because, I mean, realistically, I think outside of maybe, like, Little Mac, I think Incineroar is the best, like, ground and short hop aerial game in smash it's his moves have so much priority a lot of them are disjointed uh his fast options are fast his slow options kill his fast options kill but getting in is the big issue and we're already seeing academics use these hydrants especially a lot in the air they just keep you know incineroar in shield keep him away hey and that's gonna be something that he really struggles with throughout the rest of this game Zane, back throw, nice back throw. Ooh, not a finisher just yet, though. Academics has still got that bell free, but I, I don't know if he's going to find the right time to use it. Yeah, just going to drop it on that Hydrant to try and stall out this territory. Nice orange reset. Keep this interesting. I like how both of these guys are playing right now. Ooh, good use of that trampoline. Just making it a little weird to get back on stage here for Zane. Academics absolutely wants to make this gap as, as wide as possible to make sure when Bolts and Deekster come in, uh, they're going to have a long road ahead of them. That's not to say the Western Colorado's rest of the roster isn't bad. It's just Deeks and Bolts are, are probably the most consistent. Actually, Deekster uh, on his own, I think, is probably the most consistent player we've seen from Western Colorado for sure. Absolutely one of the most consistent players in the entire Aces series. No doubt about it. Nice cherry to keep this recovery difficult for Zane, but still no kill just yet. Holding the jump super smart there. Uh, if you play low tiers, you know how to hold your jump as a Ganondorf main. Oh, just barely going to miss that. He should have jumped think, there. He should have jumped think, it. I think he still had it, yeah. Yeah, he did. He used it after the uppie. He should have he jumped before. Unfortunate uh, there. And already 46%. Yeah, sure. Why not, Academics? Thanks, buddy. Although I do, I do think, even though we're not seeing a lot come from this Incineroar yet, I think we do kind of see what the idea was when back throw at 85 on ledge almost killed with no rage. True. That's, uh, true. I, that's what you're picking this character for. You're, you're taking fast stocks. You know, oh. I, oh. <laughs> that was a goofy interaction. <laughs> I mean, that'll do it. <laughs> Congratulations. You played yourself.
Oh my god. Zane having a lot of work done for him there. Just getting that hydrant in the air and having it pop onto Academics' skull, which, if it's Pac Man, it's all of it. So. There you go. Center also does. Ooh, there it is. Wait, I was going to say. What? Did that Larry hit the hydrant before it hit the ground? I believe it was F Smash. Uh, some of. Uh, and this is the thing with a couple characters. It really is just like a knowledge check. Sometimes there are moves that just hit the hydrant pack immediately. Uh, and you honestly, you just gotta know. Like, it's something that if you're a Pac Man player, you probably have a decent. Oh, I think we just lost Henrik. Are you, you alright? I'm here. I'm here. All right, we're, we can't have both of us going out now. I mean, we got someone's got to stay in cast. My apartment's too much. <laughs> Back here, coming off from academics, not quite gonna kill yet, surprisingly on this stage. But no rage. I mean, that's that's just gonna happen. Uh, in center, we see trying to play around these projectiles. Obviously, a very hard thing to do. Down throw, fair. Gonna put Pac-Man off stage, but not somewhere that he's you know not used to being. Interesting recovery path, but it does work. Ooh, missed times the side B press. That might have been the stock there with full rage, but fortunately, it's actually gonna go to academics there. This up isn't always necessary, but hey, he got he got back on stage. Didn't get primarily punished for, it, and so Zane is still behind here for Western Colorado post. And I gotta remember, Zane is the counter pick here. This is the person that's supposed to beat up academics after after he's won these stocks, which is is really making me kind of question why he's doing this, uh, why they thought to bring in the instant now instead of against some other character, but uh, hey, I mean, if it's what you got, if you if you think it's what's best, and uh, hey, give Zane, some, uh, give Zane some experience here and, and some stocks along the way. This is first of the Aces series, about to potentially find a second, but Academics has got 71% on it. Yeah, and I mean, for what it's worth, uh, this is good Incineroar play. This is what I like to see out of Incineroar's um, really good string usage. Uh, a lot of these stray hits are, are landing. It's it's just the matchup is tough, and I, I think you're picking Incin. I'm surprised he was able to spot that shot. Um, I think you're picking Incineroar to take quick stocks, and when he's not doing that, unfortunately, this is just kind of what the game looks like. Armoring the Hydrant, that probably would have been death, so really good armor there. Yeah. Oh, another miss on the side B. Those are a little harder to hit online, especially if you're not super practiced in it. Oh, so I do hydrant. understand that happening. Barely not killing with Hydrant. Up the armor, again, going to save. That's another stop. Ow. That's both academics. That's crazy. See, that, that worked again. Wow. That is wild here. Hold on, give me a second, man. I was gonna say, I can't tell if you're cutting out because of you or me, because my internet is also chugging. Okay, um, so we're, uh, Academics really just looking for anything to close this game out. I don't think there's a throw here that will kill, but it's definitely gonna set up for an offstage. Smartly not, he, you know, uh, Zane has been using these early uppies to armor hits, but smartly not doing it there. Academics waits for it and it doesn't come. Um, if you're Incineroar, oh, he goes for he goes for the up B. He oh, he went for the up B. He went for the down throw up B, which would have killed. Unfortunately, gets scooped right off the stage with the hydrant. Doesn't touch ground. And 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 he's stuck out there. And Tenric's chair looks fantastic. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, gonna get pushed off by the hydrant there. Uh, but again, that's just gonna happen. Uh. And Cinderella, unfortunately, just gets kind of tossed around by Pac-Man. That one was very unfortunate. The jump should have been used before, but I understand trying to hold it there. Um, and the Hydrant right there. No, it feels like Zane knew that that Hydrant would pop up with that down tilt. That's that's some Pac-Man counterplay knowledge that is really good to have, especially if you're playing such a bad matchup. The up armors, again, he, we saw that, I think, like four different times. Um, here it is. Okay, so... Yeah. Oh, he was he was in special fall. I wonder, I wonder why that put him in free fall. I've never seen that happen before. Oh, that's true. Production pointing out that he did technically land on top of the hydrant, and then it pushed him off. That's a super interesting interaction. I've never seen that happen. Tenric's chair still looks fantastic, guys. This is my first cast. I'm a little nervous to do it solo. Um. But that's uh, academics still hanging in there, still has a stock. And, and again, on Pac Man, that can be a lot. Uh, welcome back, Tenrith. I missed you so much, Cap. I missed your chair. I got to see it. Sorry, chat. My apartment, I, my apartment has a notoriously terrible 
uh, internet provider. And so I just have to deal with it sometimes. And uh, in this case, dealing with it just means waiting until the router decides to work again. So um, yeah, listen, that's what that I'm doing. What hopefully we're doing. <laughs> Mild Knights, okay, here we, oh yeah, who won, by the way? Academics. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, with so an he's unfortunate- one, he's got one stock left. With an unfortunate, uh, actually, the, the Incineroar upbeat bounced off of, oh, we, really? we got the replay going right now. Oh, thank um, you, Eon. In an interaction I've never seen happen before, oh, he landed on top what? of the hydrant and it oh, pushed him no! off, putting him in special I fall. I missed that! I didn't know Incineroar could go into special fall. So, like, that's really weird for me. I missed that, dude. I'm so sad. <laughs> well, that's you saw it like, now. Better late than never. It's so cool. Oh man, that's so cool. I I didn't know. Zane is probably so pissed, but like that's so cool. Uh Rope and Ope, I see you in chat. Zane did win our hearts. We do love to see the low tiers come out sometimes. Uh yeah, I, again, I think he was he was doing great Incineroar yeah. stuff. I think he was playing the character fantastically. He was it's exactly what I want to see from an Incineroar if you know if I'm on his team, but unfortunately they just kind of stuck him into a really bad matchup, and there's yeah. really not much you can do about that. Exactly. No, I, I mean, the Insin versus Pac-Man is, is pretty bad just because revenge just doesn't work as well as it should in a lot of those situations. I feel like it's that simple. I feel like I feel like just revenge, period. That is, that is I think, Incineroar's saving grace in a lot of matchups is just the damage you can tack on with revenge. And against Pac-Man, revenge is not reliable, especially on Wi-Fi, too. Yeah, Alol absolutely. Like, like, Alolan Whip just, like, doesn't work as consistently on Wi-Fi. Like, it just doesn't. If, yeah, if, it, if that, like, game decides to buffer for, like, two frames, suddenly you've pressed the button too early or too late, that's that's just it. We're gonna see Mild Knights come in here on the uh, Young Link. How are you feeling about the uh, Pac-Man Young Link matchup there, Tenry? I don't like it that much, honestly, for Young Link. Uh, despite the fact that it's just one stock, I think Mild Knights is still gonna have a hard time. Just because uh, with the projectiles, again, Young Link and Toon Link, they're both these characters that really like to suffocate their opponents. They like to get in close. They like to string along these aerials along platforms with jumps. And Pac-Man is relatively light, and also in a situation where he can just throw a lot of projectiles back at your direction. So Young Link is constantly pressured to just get out of the way of these projectiles and not really initiate as often. I think that he's, I think that Mild Knights is gonna have to rely on these projectiles a lot more, which we're seeing him start to do. And the the problem with that is, save for Arrow, I mean, your projectiles aren't really that reliable, nor they do, nor do they do as much damage as a lot of Pac-Man's projectiles. And so I think Pac-Man can be a lot consistent, along a, a lot more consistent along the course of this fight, which we're already seeing here. Yeah, they're also, uh, I mean, when you're looking at projectiles, Pac-Man's are definitely way safer. Of course. Um, now, do you know at the top of your head, does does the shield passive block key? I'm kind of curious. I don't. I doubt we're gonna see it come up. I don't but... think that'll happen, especially because Young Link Shield is the least consistent out of all of the links. Yeah, In fact, that's true. His, he is the only Link whose idle animation can actually decide whether or not your shield is still oh, up. That's right. Which is the he, like, dumbest. He kicks his feet, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, he kicks his feet, which lets his shield down, and so temporarily, even even while you're just standing still. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I think if he has a shield up, which again, Young Link doesn't always have a shield up during his idol, um, I don't think the key will go through. I think the key will still just hit the shield. Um, but again, in this game, you're not really standing still that often. No, you're not. I, I wish it's something that Link players use more often, but I understand why they don't. This should still be able to come back, yeah. Uh, yep, he still gets back, his trampoline. I feel like he wanted to go down there and steal the third trampoline hit, yeah. uh, but was kind of unsure of it, which, I, I mean, honestly, I didn't even know where the trampoline was, so I, I get it. <laughs> uh, it was way to the stage. I, yeah, I feel like Mild Knight still may have been a bit scared of, like, pineappling or something like that. Academics has got him to 62 right now. He's taken one off. Can he find another before he is finally trumped away? I love these mix-ups on recoveries from Academics. Really Ooh, take a while. Good do downer, it. though. Yeah, that's 100% going to do it uh, uh, up there as well. For sure. Very well done by Mild Knights to take care of this last stock. Keep it nice and close, 9-8. I mean, Academic still taking one off. That's uh, that's just more work, you know, being put in by the Pac-Man, very talented Pac-Man player. Um, now I'm, I'm looking at Campbellsville. I'm, you know, following that. You know, it was a great display, honestly. Following that, I'm not sure who I'm putting in here. I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you don't want to counterpick the young link because you're only looking at two people after this. I think the counterpicks, the, a little, you know, like midway through a crew battle, I think counterpicking is not nearly as strong as it is, maybe at the beginning or end. So I, I'm wondering, 
I'm not sure who I'd put out here, honestly. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a tough call, but Campbellsville, again, they have one of the most consistent rosters in this entire Aces series. Every single player can really pop off. So I think any pick really is safe, regardless of counter picks at this point, especially because you only have like two players left. Um, or actually, no, you have three. You have three yeah, yeah, yeah. counting Mild Knights after this. Um, and so you don't really have much more to expect. You are probably going to end up going against Eelmail and Bolt. So you'll probably have, after this Young Link, you'll probably have a Min Min or Joker and then a Plant or a Samus. Not in that order necessarily, though. Um, and so I think the best pick right now to prepare for the potential three players that you have to go up against next, I say bring out Estes. I say bring out that Rob. I say bring out your, in my opinion, most consistently powerful player on this Campbellsville roster. Yeah, I mean, I'm 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 not hating the Rob pick here. Rob has a pretty good matchup in the Young League and and, and the rest of this roster has a pretty good spread as well. Um, even when you're looking at later on, you know, uh, Min Min Joker Plant and Sam Plant just unfortunately is not a great character. Tenor will be right back. Um, Plant unfortunately just not a great character. Samus, I think, a deceptively good character, but does struggle against Rob, who has that reflector built into the side B. Um, plus top is just going to stop you from being able to chart use charge shot. You can't really camp Rob out super well because he, he has decent approach options, but also has decent zoning tools. So it's very hard to keep him out unless he wants to stay out. And, you know, if he wants to stay out, he's probably an advantage anyways. So it really doesn't matter. Um, into the Min Min or Joker, uh, Joker Rob is just uh, heavy getting tossed around, but Rob is not actually, you know, Rob is big. It doesn't matter. Rob's still Rob. There's a yeah. uh, good move. Into the Min Min, that might be rough, but... Can I can I give another hot take real quick? Go for it. I think I think Rob's top five. <sighs> I'll give Rob's you top, top ten. Five. I'll give you top I think, ten. I think, I think that Rob is above Lucina. And I'll above agree Roy. there. I, I think he's above Roy as well. I think he's above Min Min. I think he's above Shulk. I think he's above PT. I think, I think he's, he's above Min Min now. I think pre... Previously, yeah. No, absolutely not. But now Min Min's yeah. nerfed. Pre-nerfs, yeah. But uh, I think Min Min's below him. I think I think top five is Pika, Aegis, Joker, Palu, Rob. I don't think there's anybody that beats Rob. Wolf? Wolf, I think... Honestly, I think Wolf is A tier. I think Wolf is like high A tier. I think Wolf is I think Wolf is a little overrated. I'm gonna be completely real with you. I think Wolf's a little overrated. I think the problem with Wolf is that uh, he doesn't have a win the game for me button, which is kind of like a lot of why top tiers are good. Is mm -hmm. not only do they have solid neutral, solid tools, but they also have some buttons that are just like okay, I win the game. With Palu, it was Nair. With Pika, it's all of his aerials and all of his buttons and all of his B moves and also his recovery. But you know. I I think Rob just takes a little more setup to get to those win for me moves, but he can still get it done. The gyro sets up the damage, and then you have you have down throw, which can lead into a trillion different combos, as well as a finishing combo that goes like two different ways, depending on how depending on how how high your opponent's percentage is and how good of a masher they are. You also have side B off stage. That's, That's probably true. my winner. That's probably my winner. That that like puts Rob over the edge and blasts him up in the top five is how powerful that side B can be. And Estix is one of the main ways that that has been proven to me over the course of this Aces series. It's just how powerful a lot of Rob's moves are, but that power goes under the radar until you die to it. That's true. Uh, uh, for my money, I'm looking at uh, probably won't see it a lot in this matchup because Young Link generally isn't going to be above anyone. Mm -hmm. But for my money, I think Rob's best move, uh, this is my hot take, uh, up air. Because how do you DI it? I, I think that's totally justified. I think it's up air <laughs> crazy. It's up air so crazy. It lasts forever. It has really solid end lag. I, I mean, it's a great landing tool, a great starting tool. It's a bunch of combo starters. It's a bunch of combo enders. It's a great juggling tool. It has so much utility. I like. I may not necessarily agree with that, but up air, I totally agree, is is in the conversation for the best Rob move. Um, and I think it's, Rob is also in conversation for a top five character in Smash. Good for character. Sure. I mean, we're gonna see, obviously going to see the meta develop over the course of the of next course. couple of years, but of course. Uh, we'll see if we're out. You know, Sheik might sneak your way up there in the top five. I'm a you Sheik really believer. are a Sheik believer. Yeah. Straight up Sheik, Sheik believer. believer. I look as as I as I've been watching the meta change more and more for Smash. I think Sheik Hope is less copium, and yet at the same time, I don't think she's going to be as good as people say she is going to be. You know.
Yeah, I, I can see oh, it's that. It's bump, by the way, for K rule, yeah, which also makes sense because bump on. Here's the thing: bump may be on K rule, but this is a K rule that can manage any matchup. He's so ridiculous on this K rule. K rule's kind of good. I'm, I'm, I'm on the K rule train. I think. K really? I think he. I don't think he's great, right? But like upper mid, like probably the second best heavy outside of Bowser. I'd say, I'd say upper low tier, probably. Upper low? I, I think you're giving him too little here. credit. I think, I think that K. Rool can be too reliant on those zoning options. He has a lot of power behind him, but at the same time, I feel like if he's in disadvantage, which he can be for a very long time, then he is in such a rut right now. Of course, Bump is willing to prove every single one of us wrong and say, no, I'm the best character in the game, because he takes care of these stacks. Like, it, like everyone is cons like consistently at 120% all the time. You can't look at that down smash and tell me K. Rool is still I love that down smash. K. Rool down smash is like my on. favorite room in the game. It's like my favorite room in the game. Every uh, uh, newcomer for ultimate has the same down smash, except for Inkling, and I think that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they said they put it on K. Rool. I said, this move's so good. Let's put it on also Ridley and Incineroar. <laughs> A uh, lot of projectiles going to get thrown back and forth. Um, I, I think I said this a million. Oh, unfortunately, going to miss the mash timing. Yeah. Um, that's a fun thing about uh, berries. That was a little weird up. I think I'm going to assume it was a miss input. Um, the fun thing about berries, especially at high percents, is usually you have to commit to an option. Uh, unless you Honestly, K. Rool doesn't have to, but a lot of times he will because it will you know, get your reward out of committing. So, oh. Ooh. That's it, yeah. Uh, is the gun's going to do it, yeah. Narshi um, blows. That'll yeah. So gonna hold on to all the stocks too. Really, just a really clean game from uh, Bump here on the K rule. I was gonna say I'd like to see him use the armor more. Didn't even need to. I mean, when your yeah. when your projectiles are just better, like what do you? That, that's it. That's <laughs> that, that's kind of the matchup. Yeah. No, I I don't think that there is a world in which Bump loses that matchup. I don't care if he's playing K rule. I think he does so fine on it because he is just so good at launching things out at just the right time. Like I said, like, K. Rule does terrible at disadvantage, which he can be in a lot of the time, but Bump just doesn't go to disadvantage. Like, that's, that's just how, that's just how he plays. He takes control of the stage yeah. for the game, and then he just never gets rid of it. Like, he never loses control. It is astounding how great he is at making sure that he controls the entire game and everybody has to play to him. It, it, is, it is really incredible stuff. We, looks like we've got oh. bolts coming in, so that's either going to be the Min Min or the Joker. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how K. Rool does into Min Min. I can't imagine it's great, but honestly, with, with belly armor and, and side B armor and uh, just like good projectiles, I don't, I don't really hate K. Rool Min Min. I don't think it's great, but I don't think it's yeah. terrible either. No, um, it, and the I Joker's Joker. I, I doubt it's terrible, but uh, yeah, I, I think that it's still. Certainly a tough one, just because Joker is always going to be Joker and Min Min is always going to be Min Min. It's always going to be a tough sort of situation to be put in. Um, but again, I think Bump can manage just fine, knock a couple stocks off. You got to remember, Campbellsville's up 9-6 right now, so they are not necessarily as on the chopping block as Western Colorado is so far. But again, anybody can pop up at just about any single time, and we've seen Bolts uh, be a really great carry for Western Colorado sometimes. I think that Bolts vowed that he would drop the Min Min, uh, like two weeks ago, he said he was just too bored with it, which I can understand, buddy. Trust me. Um, so now I think he's permanently on that Joker. So we'll see a lot more practice time come to show off for that Joker. And I think that's what he's going to rely on. I mean, listen, it's real easy to say you're going to trap the Min Min. But when you get to ledge trap, you'll trap always the center stage, you got to come back to the Min Min. You can't just leave that on the table. Come on now. Um, I do get that mentality though. I, I picked up Min Min to cover matchups for Falcon and it was incredibly boring. And then the character <laughs> got nerfed and I was like, well, what's the point anymore? <laughs> Total. Is oh. Bolts not picking Joker then, Eon? Oh, huh? Hey, let's go. This I'm a Duck Bolts? Hunt believer. This I'm Bolts? a Duck Hunt. I'm a Duck Hunt believer. Duck Hunt is. Oh Duck my is god. Duck Hunt top 25 that's my hot take i love duck hunt so much i, I think, think duck, hunt, duck hunt's awesome. eventually gonna be really good i don't think he's good yet but i think he will eventually be great his uh, the way that he that he sets traps is so different and i think uh listen i don't okay i don't think duck hunt is top 25 right now but i think his setup clips are top 10 that's true. Duck Hunt, Duck Hunt's tend to have pretty uh, spicy clips. He's um, no, he's got so much style in him. 
And we're kind of seeing this a big body work against K. Rool here. Duck Hunt's actually a pretty good pick because while his projectiles can be finicky, uh, it's a lot easier when your target's massive. Um, going for that blunderbuss combo there, I'm just barely going to miss. Um, Dude, everybody falls for the drop down blunderbuss. Like, it never fails to work against so many of these players. This can, though. Oh, I love how much space the can just decides to take up. It's just there. I, I, it's so. The can is so reliable, too, yeah. yeah. Get to play with it just as much or as little as you want to. Gonna interesting interaction there. Uh, gonna try to cover both the get up and the roll. I assume the jump would be covered, you know, on reaction. Down B gonna hit there. Not quite gonna take. Unfortunately, that's one thing I do wish Duck Hunt had a little better. It feels like getting hit by that down B is really not a threat uh, most of the time. Yeah. Because you can just either throw a hitbox out and disarm it, or like that, you get hit at 170 and it doesn't matter. It still doesn't kill you. Um, but we, but we're seeing exactly what Duck Hunt likes to do: uh, control the pace uh, with this can and these projectiles. Kind of approach under the guise of scrapping, but realistically, you've got four other things out at the same time, so you're, you know, covering all of those options anyways. Oh, Ooh, good carry, but unfortunately not enough. Yeah, just get one more hitbox on that one. Oh, and uh, he got hit by his own can. <laughs> that'll, that'll also happen. Uh, that can uh, takes. Names from everyone, not just oh. the opponent. Oh! Oh! Ooh, oh. That's what I like to see. Dude, what? No that's shot! That's I like to that see. That was so sick, dude! And he's not done! 108%! 108! Dang, at the down edge smash, here. Down smash. All of Do a sudden, Bump is playing his own game. This is ridiculous right now. Okay, no zero to death right now. Bolt's gonna try and convert here at center stage. Another Frisbee coming out. 40%. Another, I don't know. I don't know if it is, is, a, is it like a frisbee or a skeet shot. Like what? I think like, it's a. I think it's a disc. I think it's like a skeet. Is disc. it like a? Oh yeah, it's a clay pigeon. That's what it is. It's clay. Yeah, pigeon. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it is. Whatever yeah. they're called. All of a sudden, one three percent. Bump had a streak, and now Bolt has a streak. This is such a long-winded back and forth. Yes. Back throw will find the finish though. Back throw. So there's just one more stock here for Bump. I love how Bump all of a sudden changed his play style the second Bolts came back online. Like he was playing like. Bolts was definitely playing his own game for a long time, but Bump was kind of comfortable in it until he lost his stock. He was kind of just like throwing out a blunderbuss, throwing out a crown, and he'll just do that over and over again. And he farmed like 50% out of it. But the difference is you can't get that finisher from that kind of distance. You can just shield that away. And so eventually you find the conversions into the finisher, but then uh, Bolts can do the same thing. Oh, Ooh, no, a little oh, too low in the recovery. Tragic. Um, yeah, I, and that puts you into, unfortunately, the same situation that he was in the first stock. Um, and the reason, I think, personally, Duck Hunt hasn't quite gotten into that high-tier echelon yet, um, although I think he might, with some development, uh, really struggles to kill off of, like, stray hits. It, you really need to do the setups for it. And setups are a thing that, as time goes on, it will get more consistent, um, but a lot of that's all about practice and labbing, and unfortunately, I just don't think the character is there yet. So I think you got to bring in Deekster now on this Wario for this final player for for WCU. I think that's what you got to do. Uh, Wario's a great so character. Too. Deekster's a great player. Uh, I think you can find this uh, these these last two stocks for Bump potentially find these last two players. Uh, I mean, you got a hell of a road ahead of you. Yeah, this is. I mean, anything's possible, but it's uphill for sure. Um, Wario, unfortunately, oh. not a character super great to anchor with because when you're uh, in these games, you really want to ideally have all three stocks with Warrior because you want to have time to charge that waft, which character's great without it, doesn't even need it, but, you know, having that just stock erasure immediately is super nice to have, which isn't something you necessarily get the chance to do when you're anchoring with the character just because of the fact that as you kind of get stocks chipped away from you as, you know, time goes on, I believe there's two more players after the K rule as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you're, you're gonna get your slow, you know, maybe one stock taken by maybe, maybe takes out the K roll but loses a stock, loses another stock, and then suddenly maybe it's like a, a, a three stocks to one situation. Suddenly, Wario is a significantly worse character because he doesn't have access to that waft setup. Yeah, I I think it's a scary situation regardless of who you bring in, but I think Wario is gonna be the most reliable option. If you bring in the Sheik, then you could die really early, two bumps specifically, and so I think it's not worth bringing them in. I think if you're bringing eel mail on the plant, I think the plant can also spiral out of control a bit quickly and get picked up on via recoveries. And eel mail 
can uh, can sometimes just have a little trouble mashing out. And I think if you bring an email on the Samus, um, I think Samus's projectile control can only take you so far, especially against the mains that are left for Campbellsville. With Wario, sure, you have to wait out your waft, and sometimes you won't be able to get it in time with those stocks that are chipped away at you. But until you get to that point, I think Wario does just fine. Very, very true. Unfortunately, Plant just sucks. I love the character. Oh, I yeah, really it enjoy sucks. it, but... I wish Plant was so much better. <laughs> She's so cool. He's so close to cool. He's so close. It is going to be Deeks are coming yeah. on the Wario. Um, again, though, uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, like we were talking about Tunrick, Wario is still just a solid character, even without that waft. Having access to it is fantastic. If you don't have access to it, no big deal. F-Tilt kills, bear kills, fair can gimp. He has a lot of options. Really good recovery game as well if you're really smart with how you're using the bike. Um, I, I like it in the I like it in the K rule. I think Warrior has a good enough matchup spread that I'd feel comfortable anchoring him as well. Uh, you're, you're really not going to get counterpicked too hard, I think, uh, especially looking at this Campbellsville roster. Uh, we can we'll see what happens. Honestly, I think Deekster can also get away, especially against Bump with chomping down a lot and farming that waft a lot more quickly. I think that's also something you can get away with on the edge guarding, just jumping down and and holding that neutral B, and maybe you'll land a chomp, and maybe you'll get another easy command throw out of it. Uh, I, I think Deekster will have a fine time against this K roll, but Bump is definitely a force to be reckoned with. Will, we be, will he be able to burn one stock or maybe all three? We will find out in just a moment. I cap. I have to ask, what's the best stage to go to to start things out for Wario? <sighs> I would like to see a smash fill for the side blast zones. I, I think you made a really good point with the bite because K rolls love to abuse their armor on the side B because it's ridiculously strong. Bite's gonna go right through that because it's a command grab. We're gonna see the battlefield. I don't hate the tri plats. It's gonna give Wario a lot of setups. Uh, I don't know if I want to give K roll the escape options of platforms, but. I mean, Wario gets him too. Wario's great at air camping as well with that really high air, like, air acceleration. Uh, so I, I don't think it's a bad choice, uh, especially if this is like a comfort pick as well. And this is also what we're going to oh, see baby. these platforms allow them to do. Just nair into up tilt, into up air, into up air, into whatever you want to do. I don't think that this K rule is going to want to go to those platforms too often, even just to escape. I forgot that you can eat the crown. I totally forgot about that. Wow. I didn't know you could. I learned something that new is, today. That is crazy. Um, but it is a projectile, I guess. And and ergo, you you can you can eat it up. Wario, uh, take him to your next Thanksgiving dinner. He will eat up all of your leftover uh, cranberry sauce that you have left. It's cranberry sauce is gross. Uh, anyways. Okay, well, I mean, I think oh, you're wrong, but like, that's like just a bad I, opinion. I knew, I, I, I was like, time to throw a hot take in there. This stream's been too boring Cram for a couple seconds. Oh, oh, no! no! The Nair game. Now, I don't know if Deezer had access to bike there. Uh, I, even with it, though, I don't know if he makes that back. That that belly armor hitting so low, just going to stop that projectile. Normally, that's a position where is very comfortable and just throwing out the uppie uh, against incoming opponents. But when you're fighting someone like K. Rule without belly armor, is something you always have to factor in. Kind of cheating out a stock really early, which definitely is not what you want as Digster. I love Bump taking a sweet time right now on the second stock, too. But the bike will make sure that you have to speed things up. Because that's one stock left for Mr. Bump a Dump at the moment. Can you take one more? 68%. This is kill percent for K. Rule. Granted, just about any percent of kill percent for K. Rule trying to catch on the bike recovery. Will not get it done. And here's the Nair start up here onto the platform. But Digster doesn't properly read and has to start over again. He's got the Waft free, though. I love Bite's animation on the heavies. They just, wow. they get so tiny. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, so does it re, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess this is like respawn center stage. That's really smart information to have. Uh, we're looking oh, at Waft. That's it, Never that's mind. it. I didn't even get the finish saying it. Or I was gonna say, we're looking <laughs> at a full charge Waft and he just lets it rip. I mean, K. Rool at 66 is not a character that a lot of people can kill. Wario was one of them. Waft is gonna do the job there. It's, Again, it's so, so it's such a good hitbox. It's it's really good. I understand the character solid without it, but when you think of Warrior, you think of Waft. I think you can have some fun with this. I say you can bring in somebody weird. I want to oh, see a air dodge. That's I want to see true. I want to see true Cody coming with the DDD. Just because I feel like watching some DDD right now. That would uh, <laughs> certainly be a choice. Show me King DDD. I don't know. Okay, it's gonna it's, be Essex. Okay, it's gonna yeah, be Essex. Yeah. Campbellsville wants to get out of here early. <laughs> Rob Wario, uh, 
I don't think Wario likes. I think I think I think nobody likes versus Rob. Listen, nobody wants to fight Rob, okay? But if you're gonna fight Rob, I'm not sure how I feel about someone who has arguably some of the smallest reach in the game versus a character that's spinning their entire hitbox around, you know? Like it's it's well, gonna be uh, rough getting in, I think. Uh, I think that Deegster will have a rough time getting in if he keeps playing the way that he was playing. If, if he changes things up, um, actually, he won't need to change up things that much because we saw a lot of dash attack startups, which was great. Um, and I think that since Rob is relatively heavy, you can have those same sort of up tilt to up airs um, to get a lot of damage on quickly. Um, I think space wise, you can chop up that gyro. I hope. Um, good luck. Maybe I don't know. I don't know if you can. I don't. Know I can't even pick it up half the time. Um, so like, even <laughs> exactly, if you can, it's so like... tiny. Um, I think Wario is going to have a lot of uh, fun with forward tilts. I think that's going to be kind of a bread and butter thing is edge guarding and just spacing out with the forward and down tilts just to keep distance. Um, I think that's going to be a lot of what, what he relies on. But it, it, it's going to be a, a big war of getting inside for both of these players. But the difference is Deekster has only two stocks left between Estix, Campbellsville, and the Dub. I mean... Uphill, but doable, honestly. Uh, Deeks are a very solid player. I, I've seen crazier comebacks happen. Um, we're, we're, there's some hits. I was going to say, we're, we're not seeing any percent yet, but that's a really good start. Bike in the down there. Just racking up percent on Rob. He is big. So that'll... Uh, he'll just kind of get hit sometimes, which is something I feel like uh, Deeks are really using to his advantage. Just throwing that bike out there, knowing that... Rob really has to full, like, commit to a full hop to get over that, or else he's probably going to get hit by it. I will say, though, Rob on Kalos? Yeah. Bit of Giving a, him a lot of room. Like, a lot like, of room to like, play around. Like, up air juggles at, like, 70 could probably kill you. Like, it is, it is dangerous to be against a Rob in Kalos, let alone anywhere else. But, the Easter's... Keeping some really solid pace around. Only 38% to his name Ooh. so far. And he's found stock number one with a bit of an up air juggle of his own. If you're going to make a comeback, this is how you're going to do it. Keep, keep nice and consistent, neutral. Take the kills when you can get them. You know, you got You really got to press that advantage state when you're in this situation. Playing safe is nice, but at the end of the day, if you can't get the stock, it doesn't matter. And that's something that uh, Rob will abuse. He will live for a long time if you're just... Try to play safe and get your hitboxes out there, and he will eventually just scoop you into something like that side B at the ledge. Um, not going to kill quite yet, but, you know, if that hits off stage, that's definitely the stock. 109 right now. Estic starting to fish a little bit. Going to get punished for it now over to center stage, and he's still trying to air dodge out of things. 51% can launch that bike back over and again, and he's already got his Waft ready. Real? Mm, interesting. I don't think Waft has, like, a comeback mechanic uh, where it charges faster at a deficit, but... He, he, exactly. Yeah, he's been. He's been. Is he's that a been, thing? Oh no. Yeah. If yeah, neutral B charges your waft faster. I learned something new today. I learned I don't like Wario even more. Unfortunate SD there for Deekster though. He's down to just one lone stock here and 77% up. S Dick's already burning a lot of dip, uh, of damage there. 40% thanks to that laser pickup and the the gyro just to keep that pressure coming. 104% now. You need to find that kill early so that you can get that up tilt into walk confirm really quickly here. You definitely don't want to walk just yet because Deekster in any other situation probably would just have play catch up here, but you need to hold on to this last stock. And that means you need to find this momentum early. Another up tilt here to just catch him off guard. And there's that forward tilt. There's the finisher. One mm, more stock here for Estix and then three more stocks to burn through for Campbellsville. It is tough. It is near impossible, but Deekster can absolutely do it. If I'm Rob, I'm aware of the fact that this game is not even. I'm a disadvantage because of Waft, and that's... Oh, the bike popping him the other way. Even at 70, I feel like this game is still even. Like, it, it, that Waft can... Yeah. It's going to take a bit of percent. I don't think it's... It's not going to kill at zero. It's gonna, it's definitely going to take yeah. time. Deekster especially with Rob there. being heavier. Uh, but it's, oh, it's doable. Need. That's what you need. 49%. That's, that's going to be kill percent, especially off the edge here. I believe a Waft... Oh, oh, no! no he air dodged it! That, I that's mean, I feel like that's there. game. I feel like that's game, honestly. As long as Essex just needs to find one more stock. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, this is not looking good. This is no he longer can. an even he game. He can eat the gyro. He can eat the gyro. I, I'm a better player than me. Side <laughs> <laughs> so, you now 118 here, Essex. 
Looking for this finisher, 132. They don't want to go through one more member of Campbellsville. They want to finish this off now. Another fish with a side B going to get punished. Edge guarded here. Now another side. It is tech, Ooh. though. It's the Beaster is still on the come up. 157 really here. Tech. Has to play from this distance. Back airs the gyro. Misses the, uh, the grab here. Another dash attack. Turn around back air. Has to find a couple more moves here, even on the side, especially on the side, because again, you're in Kalos. You need to kill off this top. You need to go for another juggle here, potentially. I still feel bad for that SD. That yeah, needs to that's, do it. That I mean, might that, have popped in the game. Yeah, that's that's a game changer here. You would still be so ahead if not for that unfortunate self-destruct. 176. One more move could just do it. Another neutral air trade. Still not killing yet. 106. Rob's, Rob's not a kill percent yet. That's that's you know they say Rob's big, but realistically he doesn't die. Oh, oh. no! I believe he tried to air dodge yeah. the up air and just and fast fall through it and just Wario unfortunately sinks like a brick through the air if you fast fall with him so he just falls too low to really do anything about it true very unfortunate end there for western colorado but campbellsville proves that they deserve to be in this higher tier of the aces series they retain their third place spot now with an even bigger lead going five and three in their records western colorado unfortunately is now negative so they are cementing their spot in the bottom four but not by a wide margin when we come back and interview with one of the members of campbellsville don't go anywhere